Hey guys, and welcome back to Lost Bits, the series where we explore the unused, altered, and unseen content in gaming. So a few weeks ago, I uploaded not only my first Star Wars video in this series, but also my first LEGO one, and many of you seem to enjoy it. And after playing a whole bunch of the newly released Skywalker Saga game, I wanted to make yet another video for the LEGO Star Wars series. This time, we'll be diving into LEGO Star Wars 2, the original trilogy, and I'll be saving the complete saga for a future video, so be sure to stay tuned for that. And before we hop in, a quick shout out to my channel sponsor G Fuel. If you'd like to get some delicious sugar-free energy or vitamin-filled hydration, check out the link in the description and use code TETRA at checkout for an extra 10-30% to off your order. Anyways, with all that said, it's back to the plastic Tatooine we go, it's time to find some lost bricks. Alright, so to kick things off, firstly for this game, there's only a single documented unused graphic, and that's of a basic placeholder logo for the game, simply just featuring the logos of both franchises. One extra standout difference with this logo compared to the final one is the Star Wars logo seen here is in gold, rather than the final silver version. Now there were several characters that were potentially planned to have been playable in the first LEGO Star Wars game that we went over in the last video, and there are actually several more for LEGO Star Wars 2, a total of 17 to be exact. Still found in a more or less playable state, mostly less, in the PlayStation 2 version of this game are Jabba the Hutt, Wooher, the bartender guy seen in the cantina, Rancor, who was later actually seen playable in the complete saga version, Ten Num and Nia Nun, a Bith musician, General Veers, General Jan Dodonna, Dr. Evazan and Ponda Baba, the guys who don't like Luke in the cantina, I don't like you either, Admiral Akbar's helper, Lando Calrissian in Han Solo's clothes for some reason, a 2-1-B surgical droid, and finally Luke Skywalker as seen in the endings of both A New Hope as well as Empire Strikes Back. Now, some of these might not have been intended to be playable, like Jabba the Hutt, just based on his size, and some might just be models that are used in the game's cutscenes, but weren't meant to be playable. And although all of these are playable, I think the fact that most of them don't have any movement animations just reinforces that idea. Next up, although not seemingly as many as are left over in the first LEGO Star Wars game, LEGO Star Wars 2 also has several unused cutscenes kicking around. Just like with the first game, these unused cutscenes are all basically early versions of those that are seen in the final release, only with several obvious signs that they were still a work in progress, like collision missing, missing some effects, and even blasters in some of the cutscenes that make them look pretty goofy, and even missing entire transport ships. Also, a few of them show that the choreography for the cutscenes were also altered between iterations, like in this scene inside the Death Star from Episode 4, initially Han Solo was just going to grab Chewbacca and pull him into the garbage chute. This was eventually spiced up with some of that classic LEGO Star Wars humor sauce, with Han throwing a bone down the chute to trick Chewbacca instead. Again, just like with my previous video, in the interest of time and to not simply re-upload all of these cutscenes, we won't be going through all of them here, but definitely check out Linturney Gamer's video for it where he compares all of the unused cutscenes to their final counterparts. In general, Linturney Gamer's channel is an awesome resource for a lot of unused content in LEGO Star Wars games, so yeah, definitely consider checking his channel out. Then, similarly to the unused cutscenes, LEGO Star Wars 2 also has numerous unused levels. So many, in fact, that we won't have time to go through all of them in the scope of this video, but I'll focus and show off a few of the ones that I think are the most interesting. Once again, Linturney Gamer has an awesome video showcasing these stages, so be sure to check it out if you want to see them all. Anyways, first up here, there are several unused levels that are early versions of those that are seen in the game. There are unused early version stages of Tatooine, the Blockade Runner stage, Hoth, the Rebel Attack on the Death Star, Dagobah, Cloud City, Endor, the Sarlacc Pit, the Fight with the Emperor, and more. Pretty much all of these lack many details seen in the final versions of the map, like textures, lighting, and other NPCs. Like, take the Tatooine stage here for example, the difference between the unfinished version and the final one is pretty obvious. The early Moss Eisley here lacks all of the NPCs that are seen in the final version, and overall, the whole area just seems really cursed. And if these stages so far seemed really basic, well, just you wait, they get even more unfinished. 
Next up is Hoth Escape Art, which is an early version of the Rebel Echo Base, and here, not only are numerous textures missing, but several of the rooms are still just incredibly basic, with only simple geometry models at this stage in development. The same can be said for Cloud City Trap Art, which I think appears to be the most basic unused stage for this game. There's pretty much no textures in sight here, not to mention basically no objects, enemies, obstacles, anything. In this level, you're pretty much just walking through empty grey rooms. Other unused stages appear to be a bit further along in development, but still aren't near being complete. The Sarlacc Pit stage has textures, but still no characters, and everything is just static and the lighting looks awful. Dagobah has unfinished paths, and the Endor map is just… empty. But on the flip side, a few unused stages, namely the flying segments in the Death Star battle as well as the Falcon Flight Asteroid Chase stage, are relatively complete outside of just lacking some enemies and objects. Then next, on top of all of these unused early stages, LEGO Star Wars 2 actually has several awesome unused test maps left in too, and if you've been around the channel for a while, you know I love seeing these. First up, we got Gym Test. Now most of these test maps are believed to be named after members of the dev team, for example, Gym Test here is believed to be named after developer James Cunliffe. Anyways, this first test room appears to be one that was used for testing vehicles in the game. Here you can ride in a land speeder, ambulance, some orange cars, tractors, an ATST, and even a Bantha. With all the deformations in the terrain as well as these ramps, yeah, it's clear that this was used to test how the rideable objects worked with different terrain angles. Next up we got John Test, which actually uses the same playable area as the previous stage, but this time unfortunately there's a lot less stuff to play around with. Here, there's only a golden brick, an icon of Wooher for some reason, a trigger that brings up the menu for selecting a bounty hunter mission, as well as a timer display back here that appears to be the same one as the one seen in the cantina. Come to think of it, all of the things here are things that are seen in the cantina, so perhaps this was a test room for that. Now it's not quite as many things as we saw in the last map, but it's still pretty neat. And lastly, we got Jez Test, Luke Test, Glyn Test, and just Test, all of which appear to be using the same map. At the baseline, all of these unused maps here appear to have tested the same things, the machines that give you the Stormtrooper or Bounty Hunter helmet, the things you interact with to use those said disguises, there's also this box that was presumably used to test the mechanics of just pushing it around, and lastly there are some LEGO pieces that are just used to test the building mechanic. Now although all of these aforementioned test maps are really similar, there are some differences between them. For example, Glyn Test has this floating snake, Jez Test has this ship that you can hop in and test around, Luke Test, despite the name, unfortunately doesn't seem to have anything to do with Luke Skywalker, as it just has this Bantha here. And finally, Just Test actually has the most left in here out of all of these maps. In addition to a Bantha, there's also a land speeder, this speeder that's used on Endor, an orange car, a rotating turret, a tauntaun, as well as a dewback. Most of these things you can ride on, so just like we saw with Gym Test earlier, it looks like this was another map that was used to test the riding mechanic. Seeing as how LEGO Star Wars 2 is basically developed on the shoulders of the first game, it makes sense that all of these test rooms appear to be testing new features that were first introduced in this sequel. And last up for the final release of LEGO Star Wars 2 here, just like in the first game, this one too has a nifty debug menu left over. Although it can be accessed in the demo of the PC version as well, it's incredibly easy to get in some versions of the Xbox 360 version of the game. Now I say some versions because I was trying to get it to work on a digital copy of the game, and it just straight up didn't work, so I'm not sure if it's a disc version only thing or only in certain regions. But yeah, your mileage may vary with this one. Anyways, if you do have a copy that will have this working, all you need to do is input the following code on a controller and bam, that's it. Next time you pause the game, you'll see game options highlighted in yellow. This footage I'm showing here is from a prototype we'll come back to in a bit, but the idea is the same. This debug menu in LEGO Star Wars 2 works pretty much the same as the one I covered for the first LEGO Star Wars game. 
This menu lets you do a whole bunch of handy things like warp to any level, warp to a specific chapter in a level, toggle the heads-up display graphics, enable a moon jump ability to fly wherever you want, unlock all levels, characters, extras, you name it, it's probably here. You can even unlock all of the old characters from the first LEGO Star Wars game, which you can normally do if you have a save file from the first game, but since the first game wasn't on the Xbox 360, instead you had to purchase them as DLC. So keep it hush hush, but if you manage to get this working on the Xbox 360 version, you might be able to save a buck. And just like with the first game, being able to warp to and unlock all of the stages quickly is super nifty for those who don't have time to play through the whole game to unlock every level. There's also a Not Final Chapters version of opening all of the levels, which, as the name suggests, doesn't unlock the final chapter of each episode, and this appears to actually be a remnant from an older idea that was scrapped from the game, which we'll come back to in a bit here. Now, that's basically it for the final release of LEGO Star Wars 2, but just like we saw with the first game, as part of the Hidden Palace's Project Deluge, a PlayStation 2 prototype build of LEGO Star Wars 2 has been dumped and made publicly available. Now this prototype has a build date of June 13th, 2006, about three months before the retail release of this game. Being so close to the final release, there aren't that many changes here from the final one, but still a few notable ones. For starters, some cutscenes are still clearly unfinished and lack any sound effects or sometimes even music at all. There's three Han Solos in this cutscene for some reason, the characters just disappear when getting close to the Jabba the Hutt room here, the bartender is missing in the cantina in this build, and it seems like at least a few of the mini kits are in slightly different spots, often lacking any puzzle or difficulty for that matter compared to the final version. And probably the most interesting change I find is seen with the final chapters of each episode in this build. Now, I gave you some foreshadowing to this like a minute ago, but as suggested with the Not Final Chapters unlock option in the debug menu, in this prototype of the game, the final chapter of each episode was initially going to be missing its door, and instead of just being able to play the final chapter after beating the previous level, the idea was initially that players would have to build up the last door using gold bricks to unlock it, much like the episode bonuses as seen in the final. This idea certainly would have incentivized players to replay previous ones, but ah, I don't know, I feel like this would have really interrupted the flow of playing through an episode to just not be able to finish it if you didn't have enough gold bricks, and I guess the developers eventually agreed and moved this idea to the episode bonus stages. Then, unlike the final PS2 release of this game, this prototype also has the debug menu left over accessible using the same code as the Xbox 360 one, just with the PS2 buttons. The debug menu is almost the same, but a few things didn't seem to work. For starters, all of the unused art stages do still load, but when loaded, they're just empty and unplayable. Secondly, although the options to unlock all of the characters from the prequel games is here, it doesn't seem to work too. So perhaps this prototype was still at a point in development where those characters weren't fully implemented yet. Other than that though, although still super useful, there's not really much else to this debug menu that I haven't covered already. And that's LEGO Star Wars 2. I wanted to cover the complete saga in this video as well, but I bit off a bit more than I could chew with it, so stay tuned for that video in the near future, and be sure to subscribe to be notified as soon as it's live. And while you're here, check out some of my other Lost Bits videos, and as always, thank you all so much for tuning in today, and I will see you in a bit.